Hi guys, Nerd General here. Um, I just want to do a quick overcap of changes that have happened in Mr. Pandaria 5.1. For Feral Druids, there haven't been that many changes directly affecting us. There have been changes to Tier 1 and Tier 2 weapons that increase the PvP power, so that means that we're going to be pumping out more damage versus other targets. The main changes that have been made are to other classes. High PvE damage abilities that have been nerfed to a level that's sustainable in PvP so that you can't have a warrior, for example, turning around and hitting you with a 5 stack Taste for Blood for 350k. It can now only be a 3 stack Taste for Blood and I know that that's still 300% but it's not as much damage as 500%. That takes away a lot of pressure from your healer in a game that he doesn't have to be fully worried about a 5 stack warrior turning around and smashing you. Also, it will start to remove these double warrior combos that we're seeing in Arena. Um, I believe that's called Man Cleave. So jumping away from other classes, let's go into a quick 101 on Feral Druids. Let's first look at stat priority. Um, first off, we've got hit. We want to have 3% hit. The second stat that's needed after that is going to be PvP power. Now, as I mentioned before, PvP power has been buffed on weapons. This is because PvP power is currently the best way of doing damage to another player. Uh, as a Feral Druid, you always want to go for agility, so make sure that all of your gear has agility. But in all of your sockets, try and put in Stormy River's Heart, unless you're really loving the socket bonuses. Um, I only use the socket bonus in my Hell, which is a red socket, which I believe is the, uh, the gem that starts with Assassin. So if you just click on Gem in the Auction House, type in Assassin, uh, you'll find that gem there. After agility, we've got PvP Resilience. That's a big one to get. Uh, currently this season, damage taken is going to be a big factor. Um, I believe in the second season it won't be quite so much, health, health pools will be a lot larger, damage will be more but it won't scale in the same way that health pools will scale. Straight after resilience you've got your se normal secondary stats, mastery, crit and haste. Now that's the order that you want to keep those in. So if you have gear that's prioritising crit and haste, you want to reforge your haste into mastery. Now what mastery does, in case you're unsure, it increases the damage of your bleeds. So these are, this is a direct damage ability, uh, like rip and rake for example. You want to make sure that you've always got up on your targets. This allows for a constant stream of damage so that if you're CC'd across, across the other side of the map, you can make sure that you're still putting out a significant amount of damage via your bleeds, which are in most games clutch. Straight after mastery you've got crit. Crit's obviously great. Um, do remember that crit can affect bleeds, so you can have a rake critting for 35k on a player that's on the other side of the map whilst you're feared or onto, onto a healer. This just puts out a bit of pressure. Try and always get a minimum minimum of a four point rip off on a target. With all of your cooldowns up, make sure you get five point rip. That'll apply a lot more pressure, even if you're not directly damaging them. After crit, we have haste, which increases your energy regen and increases your auto attack speed. That's something that you can reforge out of, but you want to bear in mind, keep a good percentage of it. And then last but not least, we have expertise, which you need at least 3%, but you will more than likely get that from your gear without needing to gem or reforge anything. A few things to note on a Feral Druid, when you're playing them you want to make sure that you can have Savage Roar up all of the time. You can now use Savage Roar with the use of a Glyph without the cost of any points on a target. This means that you can use it in stealth at the beginning of a match so you don't have to worry about bringing it up during a fight. These are my talents here and these are my Glyphs. Now my talents change depending on uh, which scenario I'm in. So if for example I'm in a twos match, I'll make sure to have Mighty Bash over Disorienting Roar. But if I'm in a threes match, I'll make sure to have Disorienting Roar over Mighty Bash. Now again, it does depend on what comps you're playing and I can't list all of them. If you want me to do a more in-depth video on how I play using Disorienting Roar, I'm more than happy to make a quick video of it. Mighty Bash will always be used in twos as you're going to need to CC one target whilst you hit another target. Uh, that can be used in conjunction with Nature's Swiftness, which is an ability that, you, which is a talent you always want to get. Nature's Swiftness into a Cyclone, or Predatory Swiftness into a Cyclone. You can find a video up here that I've done, where I've showcased the nature in which Nature's Swiftness and Predatory Swiftness can win you a game via the use of Cyclone. After that, you've got the Feral Swarm versus Typhoon argument. Now in Arenas where they're, where it's all on one level, I prefer to use Feral Swarm as it allows you to slow a target and you can drill into that target without them getting away. It's especially good for hunters whether they be BM or Mastery. Survival, someone said? No, I don't think so. I haven't yet seen a survival hunter in Arena. In maps like Dalaran, Sewers and Blaze Edge Arena, you'll want to go for Typhoon. Now Typhoon's great for blowing players off the bridge and off down to the lower part of Dalaran Sewers. This can be a 10 second CC which you can turn into even longer if you're, if the characters that you're playing with and you 
are good enough to get your cyclones off at the right times, timing your predatory swiftness or your nature swiftness if needed. So Typhoon in Arena is where you can blow a player off, where it might win you the game. So quickly I'll just look at the main talents you always want to go for. Wild Charge, Mobility. You always want to have Wild Charge so that you can Wild Charge a Warrior's Charge or Wild Charge a Mage's Blink. This means that you can stick on your targets all of the time. Next up is Nature Swiftness. You'll need this for either healing yourself, your teammates, or using in or using an instant cyclone on a player that you're going to need to CC in order to win the game. Then there comes the Pharaoh Fire versus Typhoon argument. Next up is Incarnation, which you always want. This activates the advanced Feral Druid form where you've got your armor. This allows you to do more damage uh, via the use of Ravage outside of the requirements for stealth and position. After Incarnation, you've got Disorienting War versus Mighty Bash, which I covered. And then finally you've got Nature's Vigil. Nature's Vigil is a big, big DPS button. It increases your damage done by 20% and 25% of the damage that you do to a single target will heal one of your teammates. So if you're in a twos match where you're both going pretty hard on one player, 25% of the damage that you do will heal your teammate. This is a lot of healing and is, a, is basically a clutch and game changing ability. I won't go over full PvP or PvE rotations for Feral Druid. I can do that in another video if that's something that you might be interested in. Let me know down in the comments below and just give me some feedback guys. Likes are always appreciated and if you want to subscribe there will be more Feral Druid PvP content coming out soon. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.